Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now, before we go down to Pine Ridge, here's a suggestion for that evening party you may be planning. Try serving Horlicks malted milk or Horlicks with sandwiches. You'll be surprised what an interesting change it makes. One your guests will appreciate, too. They'll prefer it to the usual tea or coffee, and they won't be worried about their sleep later. And besides, Horlicks is so delicious and refreshing. It won't interfere with the bridge game, either. It's so easy to prepare. You just have to add sufficient of the powder to water, mix thoroughly with an egg beater, and it's ready to serve. It isn't necessary to add milk or any flavoring unless you desire it. Remember that when you're stumped for something to give to your friends. Horlicks certainly makes a welcome change. Make sure you have on hand a good supply of Horlicks malted milk, either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When we left Lum and Abner yesterday, they were very discouraged over the unsuccessful opening of their circus last Saturday. And were trying to figure out some way to move the show to some of the neighboring towns. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at Lum's store, discussing ways and means of carrying on. Listen. Well, I don't like to invest no more money in this circus neither, Abner, but it's like Squire says. If we leave it here in Pine Ridge, we can't expect to get no crowd here. We've got to take it out of town or get shut of it once. Well, I don't want to get rid of it if we can help it. I've always wanted a circus, and <laughs> now we got one, well, I'd love to keep it. Now, don't you worry. you get to keep it all right. I don't know anybody else that'd have it. Well, I believe, old Lum, when we get it in some of these other towns around here where folks ain't already seen it, why, we'll make some money out of it. Yeah, all we got to do now is find out some way to raise enough money to get it moved. Yeah. Squire talking about buying a bunch of trucks to move it in. Them things cost money. Yeah, well, he... Mike could buy them on a credit, maybe. I don't know. I don't like to go no further in debt on this thing if we can help it. I was just wondering if we couldn't get some of these lumber haulers around here to move us. Why, we ain't got no lumber to move. Well, no, but I reckon they could move animals just as well as they can lumber. Well, I don't know, Lum. I don't believe they could stack them animals up on a truck like they do lumber. Of course not, but they can set them cages up on the trucks, can't they? Uh, come to think about it, Lum, they'd a transfer company in there at the county seat that we could get to move the elephants. Transfer company? Yeah, he's got a sign right there on his truck saying that, that he moves elephants. Moves elephants? And it's what it says right on the side there. It says we move anything from a sack of flour to an elephant. Oh, well, he don't mean he sure enough moves elephants, though, ever. Well, now, he sure got that rope right on the side of his truck. Yeah, that's just an expression. He means no matter how little or how big our article is, anybody's got to move, why, well, he'll move it. Well, they ought to take that sign off of there, then, if that's what he means. Yeah, he just put that on there more than likely for advertisement. Yeah. Looks to me like a mighty poor advertisement, a few elephants as he is around here. Well, he never expected to move no elephants when he put it on there. Well, that's the foolishest thing I ever heard of, then. He about like putting a sign up on a store here that you sell steamboats. Well, in the first place, Abner, we ain't going to have to move the elephants. Ain't going to have to move them. Why, of course not. We just... Why, that's the main part of the show, Lon. Now, we don't want to leave them out here. No, sir. No, 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 but them elephants will move themselves. You mean drive a truck? No, for goodness sake. No, Abner. Who ever heard of an elephant driving a truck? <laughs> I don't know. That'd be the funniest sight I ever seen. <laughs> An elephant sitting up there in the front seat driving. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, he, he could signal whenever he wanted to turn a corner, you know, just by sticking out that snout of his to the side. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'll bet them policemen down at the county seat, I'll bet they'd think twice before they run out and bowl him out for not stopping at one of them stoplights. Abner, I'm trying to talk sense to you, and I can't do it. Why, it sounded all right to me, Lum. I don't see nothing wrong with what you said. Yeah, all this silly talk about elephants driving trucks. Well, you said they'd move themselves, not Well, just... what I mean, though, we won't have to haul them in there. We can just let them walk in there. Walk in? Well, sure, it ain't but 18 miles. Yeah, but they don't know the way long. They don't even know what road to take. Well, of course not. Somebody'd have to go with them, lead them. 
course. Now, if they'd ever been in there once, why, they wouldn't have no trouble finding a way again, you know. They don't forget nothing. No, I know they don't forget. An elephant never forgets. I always hear that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that uh, that fella that uh, squire hired over there to train them, he, he says it's just downright astonishing how they can recollect things. Yeah. He was telling me about an elephant that they had with some circus he was with it. Said it, it recollected a fella that he hadn't saw for five years. For five years? That's what he said. Well, I do know. Uh, he said that uh, there was a fella, you know, that was uh, hunting wild animals in Africa and that he uh, catched this elephant in a trap. Well. And uh, when he seen the elephant, you know, and seen how pitiful he looked, why, well, he just decided to just turn him loose again. Well, that was nice of him. Yes, sir. And, and he said five years later that that same fella was sitting in a circus clean up in the bleacher. And this elephant was in the show and said he looked up there and he seen this fella and he, he stood there and looked at him a minute and then he walked right over and picked him up with his trunk and carried him over and set him down in a three dollar per jar seat just to show his appreciation. Oh, I don't believe it. I Never don't... charged him a cent for it. That's what he said. Uh, that fella was just telling you some stuff. Well, I reckon he ought to know he was in a circus at the time and seen it. Abner, you stay away from down at them circus fellas. They've already got you using a batch of them slang expressions. Oh, no, Lon. That, them is fine fellas down there. <laughs> Why, Lord, me, we just have a big time together, joshing one another and all. <laughs> they never can recollect my name, old looks like. Uh, they've been calling me Harm ever since they've been here. Harm? Yes, I, I, I bet you I've told them a thousand times that my name is Abner. But, <laughs> well, they just... Right backwards from elephants, you know. They, they just don't seem to be able to recollect nothing, them circus fellas. Uh, they're just making fun of you. That's what they're doing. You ain't got sense enough to know it. Oh, no, they're not neither, Long. No, sir. Why, they're awful nice. Just as nice a folks as I've ever been around in my life. And they do anything for you. Do anything for you? I sure they will. If there's one of them down there, he just the same as give me $2 this morning. Give you $2? Well, he... <laughs> Never exactly give it to me, but he sold me a pair of five-dollar spectacles for three dollars. Did you let that fella down there sell you a pair of spectacles? Let me see them things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, there's a bargain for you. For <laughs> goodness sake. Ain't them dandy? Hmm. Well, he sure sells them, I'll say that for him. Yeah. He's got a new pair of spectacles on every man, woman, and child in Pine Ridge. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to wear no pair of spectacles he picked up for me. I'll tell you that right now. Not some fella that's following our circus around that way. Oh, Lum, you're just mixed up right now. You just don't know what you're talking about. That fella is the best octopus I ever seen in my life. He's a heap better than that that I went into the county seat and got that last pair from. He's so much quicker. Quicker? Yeah. Now, that, that fella in there at the county seat, he made me sit there for two hours just to fit my eyes. Reading stuff. He'd stick up a little old card there and say, can you read that? Yeah, I know they always do that. They're trying to find out a pair that fits you when they do mm-hmm. that. Just a bunch of foolishness. I know how to read before I went in there. He wasn't trying to learn you how to read. He was trying to get your eyes fitted. Well, he never done much of a job, I'll tell him that. Take him all that time, two hours and a half. Then he claimed to me that he'd been plumb through a spectacle college. This fella this morning, he just sort of stood there and Looked me over a little, and reached down in his case there and pulled out a pair of spectacles and slapped them on me, and there I was. Never taken him two minutes. Well, is that all he done? Well, no. He asked me if they hurt my ears, but they never, so I took them. Mm, yeah, they might fit your ears all right, but what about your eyes? That's what you're supposed to be wearing them for. Huh? How did they fit your eyes? Can you see out of them? Well, I can't tell much about them today, Lum. It's been so damn blame foggy all day. Foggy. Yes, sir. I never seen a fog hang on so bad in my life as it has today. It ain't foggy. It's them spectacles. They don't fit you. That's a trouble. Don't fit. Well, I mean, they don't fit your eyes right. Well, he said that I wouldn't be able to see through them at first, and I'd sort of have to give them time to set to my eyes, you know. <laughs> you ain't stone blind with that. Hey, you never need no spectacles in the first place. Oh, yes. I'm old. Lord me. Yes, I did, too. I sure did. My eyes had just plumb went back on me, Lum. I, I just got to where I couldn't see nothing hardly. Hmm. I never hear you complaining about your eyesight. Well, I never knowed it myself till yesterday. Yes, sir. When a feller gets to where he can't see nothing as big as a bean, why, there's something the matter with his eyes. A bean? 
Yeah. I, I was down there at the circus ground yesterday, and there's a fella down there, he had uh, three shells there, and then he had a little bean that he put on there, one of them, you know. And I, I got to trying to follow that bean, and I lost nine dollars trying to guess which one of them shells it was on there. You was betting with that fella? Yeah. I'd have win, too, if my eyes hadn't been so bad. For goodness sakes. After if I catch you over there betting with them fellas again, I'm going to walk you on. Well, I can beat him now, Lom, as soon as my eyes get used to these new spectacles. Where's your old spectacles at? Huh? Where's your old ones at? Oh, I, I share my pocket. Let me see. If you want to buy them, Lom, I ain't got no use for them now. Of course I don't want to buy them. They wouldn't fit me in the first place. Well, I don't know now, Lom. Them, them awful long handles on there. I believe they'll reach over your ears all right. I never wore a pair of spectacles in my life. Here, give me them new ones. And put them over his back on before you run. Now, here, now, wait a minute. Now, don't do that, Lum. Here, wait a minute. Put no, them back. You ain't got sense enough to look after yourself. I'll do it for you. I'm going over there right now and get that $3 back for you. And I'm going to run both them fellas off of that circus rod, too. Now, granted, that's one thing I ain't going to stand for a minute. Come on. <laughs> well, the old fellas are learning that there's a lot more to a circus than the animals. <laughs> And now a final word before we leave Pine Ridge for the night. I'd like to tell all mothers of growing children about a recent interesting test we made. We studied the effects of giving youngsters Horlicks malted milk tablets between meals instead of the usual candy. And here's what we found. Almost all of the children loved the taste. A lot of them liked it even better than candy. And as many as 75% of the mothers reported an improvement in the health of their children after only 10 days. Some slept better at night, they said, and showed greater energy. Others showed less nervousness and better appetite. In general, nearly all the mothers felt that the use of Horlick's tablets between meals would overcome the loss of appetite, the mental sluggishness and irritability that resulted, they believed, from eating too much candy. And here's the reason. Made only from full cream milk and the finest of wheat and malted barley, Horlick's tablets abound in wholesome, energy-giving nourishment. They ward off hunger and yet won't spoil appetite because they are so easy to digest. And that's just what the survey showed. Keep a package of Horlicks tablets on hand at home or at your work. You can get them in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.